Hello everyone, this is Mr. Molo for lesson 7.1, adding and subtracting polynomials. So that's what most of this lesson is going to be, just adding and subtracting. Um, and then we'll have a couple questions uh, in the middle there that kind of talk about degree, but we'll get to that. So that first page and a half is just about writing them, um, which the book already does for us in most of the questions. So then on page 205, it gets to some actual problems. So first we need to add our like terms for A and B. So let's go over what a like term is. So in order for something to be a like term, it needs to have the same variable, okay, or no variable. So make sure when you're looking at something, make sure that the variable is the same. So you can't add like an X and a Y or an A and a B or anything like that. They need to have the same variable. And then if they have the same variable, they also need to have the same exponent. So you can't add like an x and an x squared, even though they're both x's, one's an x squared and one's an x, so they're not going to be the same. So if you look at a here, I'm going to underline each of these ones that are the same uh, in a different color. So I have x squared, a 2x, that's not the same as x squared, a negative 1, that's not the same. And then over here I have a 2x squared, and then a negative 2x, and then a positive 1. So both of those are x, x's, and both of them are squared. So they have the same variable and the same exponent, so I can add those together. So x squared plus 2x squared gives me 3x squared. Okay, now let's look at my x's. I have a 2x, okay, not a negative 1. I have a negative 2x, and then I have a plus 1. Okay, so then I can combine those because they're both x's, and really they're both x's to the first power. So 2x plus a negative 2x is nothing. It's 0, so I'm not even going to write anything there. And then last, we have numbers. We have negative 1 and positive 1. So they don't have a variable, so that's the same. And then negative 1 plus 1 is 0 again, so I'm not going to write anything there. So when I combine these, I end up just with 3x squared. Okay, let's look at b. So I have a 4x here and a 1x here. They're both x's. They both have an exponent of 1. So 4x and 1x make 5x. And then we have numbers here. I have a positive 3 and a negative 2. I combine those, I get a positive 1. So once I simplify letter B there, I end up with 5x plus 1. Okay, C and D are pretty much the same thing except they're subtracting. Okay, I like to distribute the subtracting sign first. Otherwise, it might be kind of hard to remember every time that you're going to be subtracting. So remember, this negative sign out in front is really a negative 1. And that means everything is going to get multiplied by a negative 1. So that means a negative 3x squared, a negative 2x, and a negative 5. Again, I like to do this first just so I have all my subtracting out of the way there, um, and I distribute everything. If you like to do it as you go, that's perfectly fine. I'll do this one this way, and then I'll do d the other way, and you can kind of see which one you like better. Okay, so I have an x squared here and a negative 3x squared. So if I combine those, a positive 1x squared and a negative 3x squared, I get a negative 2x squared. And then x's, it looks like I only have this negative 2x there, so there's nothing to combine that with, so minus 2x. And then I have a positive 2 and a negative 5. And if I combine 2 and negative 5, I end up with a negative 3. So I end up with negative 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, so if you're not going to do it that way where you're distributing first, then you're really just distributing over and over again. So here I have a 2x minus a 3x minus a negative 2x. So with that minus a negative, that's going to end up turning into a plus. So let's do this first. So I have 2x minus 3x, that's negative x, minus a negative 2x, that turns into a positive 2x. So then I'm left with just x. Okay, same thing here. Now, this parenthesis is pretty much done. I have a negative x squared, because remember that is going to get distributed to both of those. And then same thing with that 4. I have a negative 4. So then once I simplify d, I have negative x squared plus x minus 4. So again, I like c better. I like to distribute all and kind of write it all out versus d, where you're kind of just subtracting each step that you go and you got to remember that you're just kind of really distributing that negative there. All right, so now if we look at the bottom of page 207, it's going to ask us to find the degree. 
Okay. And in simplest terms, a degree is pretty much how many how many variables or how many exponents, how many exponents are on the variables. Okay, so we're just looking at the exponents on variables. Okay, so here's my variable s, here's my variable w, here's, I don't have a variable here, so we'll get to three in a second. Here's my variable a, b, c, variable x and y, rst, mn, and eight's kind of like three where there is no variable. So let's do those two first. There is no variable, so that means the degree is zero. If you have a problem without a variable, that means it can't have a degree because your degree is how many exponents are on the variables. Well, if there's no variables, then there's no degree, okay? Let's look at one and two. So that's s to the first power and w to the first power. So how many exponents are on my variables? Well, s to the first power, so that means my degree is one, and w to the first power, so that means my degree is also one, okay? Four, kind of similar. This is really, I can rewrite this and do two a to the first power, b to the first power and c to the first power. So now if I look at my exponents, I have a one, a one, and a one. And we're gonna end up adding those together. And so my degree on number four is really three. So one a, one b, one c, one plus one plus one is three. Kind of the same thing on number five here. I have x squared and y to the first power. So two x's and one y, two and one. That one also has a degree of three, okay? Six, they get a little more intense here. So I got two r's, three s's, and one t. So two plus three plus one is six. And then same thing here. I have m to the first power and n to the third power. 1m and 3n's, 1 plus 3 is 4. So sounds a lot harder than it really is, but really it's just adding. So when they ask you to find the degree of the monomial, then you guys just got to add up the exponents. Okay, also known as all of these are monomials. Hopefully you've seen the word mon or mono before. Mono means one, okay, or first, okay? So there's only one problem here. There's nothing that's being added. We'll get to that in the next set of problems. What it'll ask us to determine whether it's a monomial, binomial, or trinomial, or polynomial, I guess, too. Okay, so monomial means there's only one nomial, one number. Binomial, like a bicycle, means there are two numbers. Trinomial, like a tricycle, means there are three numbers. And we don't have anything past that, so anything that is four or more is really a polynomial. Okay, so first of all, on number nine, it wants us to write it in standard form. Standard form means your biggest exponent first. Okay, so this one has a exponent of one, this one has an exponent of two, this one has an exponent of five. So that means I'm going to rewrite this with my biggest exponent first. So there's my first step. There's me rewriting it in standard form, okay? Then it says, identify the degree and the leading coefficient. So our degree here for each monomial, this one has a degree of two, this one has a degree of one, this one has a degree of zero. So our biggest degree there is two because of the x squared. So this is it in standard form. Our degree is two. Then it asks for the leading coefficient. If something is leading, that means it is in front. So the number in front in this problem is three. 
And then it wants us to classify, and classify is what I talked about up here in purple. So how many different parts do we, do we have here? Well, we have an x, we have a 3x squared, and we have a plus 5. So I have three different parts, so this problem would be a trinomial. Okay. Basically, however many plus or minus signs you see, kind of add one to it, and that's what you have. So if you don't see any, that's zero, like number 10, add one to it, you have a monomial. Here I have one addition sign. Add one to it, you get a binomial. Here I have two addition, or one subtraction, one addition sign. Add one to it. So that one's going to be a trinomial, but we'll write all these down here. So this one in standard form is just square root of 5y. We can't rewrite that anyway because it's just a monomial. Okay. Degree here, it's y to the first power. So my degree is 1. My leading coefficient, remember that's my number in front of my variable. My number in front of my variable is the square root of five. And it's just one thing there, so it is a monomial. Okay, here, let's write this out. So I have to the eighth power and to the fifth power, eight is higher, so technically it should be six x to the eighth power plus three x to the fifth power. So we gotta write that out in standard form with a bigger exponent. Our degree, this one has an exponent of eight, this one has an exponent of five. So our degree for this problem is eight. Our leading coefficient, so our number in front of, uh, to start the problem is a six. And then classify it, there are two things, six x to the eighth power, three x to the fifth power, so that is a binomial. And the last one like this here, so the biggest exponent colors is f to the fourth power and then we have f to the second power because two is less than four and then we have two f to the first power and that one's last because one is smaller than two okay our degree is four because f to the fourth power is the biggest our leading coefficient here is kind of tricky there's no number in front of the f but remember there's always really a one in front of all of our variables. And then when we classify, we're gonna classify this as a trinomial because there's one, two, three different parts. All right, and then to end it here, they have you going back to doing some of those problems from before. So I'll look at one or two of these here um, before we end the video. So remember only adding if they have the same variable and the same exponent. So here I have a negative four X and a positive six X. So I add those together and I get 2x. Here I have a positive 9 and a negative 14. I add those together and I get negative 5. Okay. Five, or 15 here, I have x squared and negative x squared. Lucky for us, those cancel. So that's just going to be 0. I have 3x and 6x. So that makes a 9x. And then I have 5 and a negative 4. And that makes 1. Okay. With this minus problem, remember I like to distribute right away. So I have g minus 4 minus 3g, and then negative negative 6 ends up being a positive 6. Another reason why I like to distribute right away, so you kind of get rid of all those tricks right away. So I have g and negative 3g, that means I have a negative 2g, and then I have negative 4 and a positive 6, and that leaves me with a positive 2. And then last one we'll do here, number 19. So I have negative x squared minus 5, and then again, distribute that negative. So negative times negative 3x squared is a positive 3x squared. Negative times a negative x is a positive x. Negative times a negative 8 is a positive 8. Okay, now we look at what our like terms are. Negative x squared and 3x squared, that gives me 2x squared. Negative 5 and positive 8, that gives me a positive 3, and then I'm just left with this positive x hanging out over here by itself. So I end up with 2x squared plus x plus 3.